Thank you so much. Oh, it's so, it's such a joy to be here with all of you. And I'm just delighted to see so many faces in person, outside the Zoom box. And, uh, and of course, my love for my Bangladeshi extended family who is sitting here. I'm so proud to be sitting with all of you. My hat's off to you, my love to you always. And for everything that you do for this social business movement, with hearts open, minds open, thank you. Please give them a round of applause because we, we just, they are the heart and soul of the social business movement along with all of you. And we are very, very happy to be here with all of you. So a little bit about Sing for Hope. Um, thank you, Hans, for your beautiful introduction. My name is Monica Yunus. I am the daughter of Professor Yunus, and I have the gift of being given the opportunity to find my passion and my voice in what I do. I'm a musician. I'm an opera singer by training. I went to Juilliard and I've been very fortunate to sing on some of the world's greatest stages, including the Metropolitan Opera and many other stages throughout the world. Um, part of my story was growing up in uh, New Jersey. I was born in Chittagong, Bangladesh, and then um, grew up in New Jersey in the United States. And I was always singing, always singing as a child. And uh, my mother actually t would take me to um, elder care facilities during the holidays and I would sing. And that kind of drove a bit of my uh, history and my passion and where we are today, 16 years later in the story of Sing for Hope. Just very briefly, for those of you who don't know what Sing for Hope is, we are a, an artist peace corps of sorts and our mission is to create a better world through the arts. And our vision and our belief is that all of us, every single one of you, even if you don't identify yourself as an artist, you are indeed an artist and a social entrepreneur through that voice and through your artistic medium, whatever that may be. Uh, so I began my journey with Sing for Hope at Juilliard. Uh, my dear, dear friend and sister and our social business marriage is through Sing for Hope. Camille Zamora is my co-founder alongside me. And when we were students at Juilliard, we experienced uh, the terror of 9-11. And we were students at the time. And many people don't know this, but Sing for Hope shares, or excuse me, Juilliard shares a city block in New York City with a firehouse who was among the first responders. And they, many of them lost their lives that day because they were among the first people to go and try to rescue people out of the, out of the buildings. And Camille and I brought some friends together and we went to the firehouse and we just started to sing because in those moments, your impulse as a human is just, what can I do? And for us, it was very simple. We just sing for you. That's all. We'll stand here and we'll sing. So we brought some friends together. And that started our journey for Sing for Hope. Today, we are in the United States, the country's largest public art project. We do the Sing for Hope pianos. And we're very, very excited today to announce that we created a beautiful Sing for Hope piano here in Turin. Um, and it will live at the Sedwig and Arsenal of Peace. Thank you. Yes. If you have not seen this beautiful piano, hopefully you have because they've been showing these gorgeous pictures of the Sing for Hope piano that will live here. And it was created by the beautiful refugee children who are associated with the Sedmi Ar Arsenal of Peace and by our wonderful Sing for Hope artist project leaders who are here today with us. I did not have the pleasure of meeting one of them until coming to Turin and they together have created five Sing for Hope pianos throughout Europe, serving refugee children from Ukraine. And they, together with these different groups of children in five different European cities, they created Sing for Hope pianos over the course of the past two months. I'd like to introduce them to you today. Victoria Dano and Peter Hare, are you here today? I know you're here. Can you stand up if you're here? I'm sorry, I don't see them. I don't see them. If they're not here, well, they're still sleeping. <laughs> we do have our wonderful, wonderful Sing for Hope ambassador here, Marco. Please stand up, Marco. Thank you, Marco. Marco is given the responsibility of caring for the Sing for Hope piano in their beautiful lab, musical lab that they have incredible programming for wonderful children. Um, they will activate the Sing for Hope piano for many, many years to come. And we're very honored to have this relationship and partnership. So thank you. Thank you. We have incredible artists all over the world who will do workshops, create 
the sing for hope piano with the children and then that lives in a community space that activates throughout the year so it's really sort of a 19th century instrument bringing this life and community and well-being through the arts and this is something that we're working on um, throughout our programming whether it's working with children whether it's working in elder care facilities hospitals refugee centers throughout the world um, we had the honor this uh, past July to open the high-level political forum at the United Nations with our collective youth voices through the Sing for Hope Youth Chorus. They sang a tremendous anthem that I hope will ring throughout your ears. It's called Dream Big, Speak Loud. These were children that, despite being maybe five miles away from the United Nations, had never been to the island of Manhattan, let alone into the building of the United Nations. So this summer we created a Sing for Hope piano that embodies the Sustainable Development Goals, and they brought their song to the United Nations. I'll show you one more video, and I'll leave you with a little bit of homework. So my homework for all of you today, because, you know, my dad was a professor, so you have to have a little bit of homework. So he, he teaches me to make sure you all also have a little homework for the rest of the day. I ask all of you to find someone that you don't know here today and just sit down, have a little kind of speed conversation, get to know them, get to know what their commitment and marriage to social business is and make the connection because this community, this social business family marriage that we talk about so much is about making those relationships. And now more than ever, it's a delight to be able to be in person, to meet one another, to exchange ideas, and of course, to listen and to help all of us together to dream big and speak loud. Get to know one other, another today and use this time to be in community. Thank you so much.